Welcome back to your Algebra 1 Semester 1 Final Review. Just a friendly reminder that the problem number on this video might not match the problem number on your review, but that's totally fine as long as the problem itself actually does match. Um, so, let's jump into this. Um, here they're giving us two different lines, and it's kind of tricky to see that they're both lines. I mean, the first one, hopefully we can see, the first one is a line that's, of course, graphed. All right? It's graphed right down here, and we can analyze a couple things about the graph. We can see that the y-intercept right here looks like it's 2. Uh, we can count the slope. The slope, we pick another nice point, looks like it's up 1, 2, 3, 4, so up 4 over 1, right? And then we could even maybe guess at the x-intercept. The x-intercept is, I don't know, looks like it's between 0 and negative 1, so maybe our x-intercept is negative 0.5-ish, give or take. Usually those are the three things that you're asked about for your graph. Can you find the y-intercept? Can you find the x? Can you find the slope? All right, well, we found all those three. Let's look at line b. Line B is a little bit trickier because line B, they didn't actually give us the line. They gave us the line, but as an equation. Now, if you graph this, and you don't have to graph it on this, but if you graph this, this is going to make some other line. And maybe you should think back about how to graph this. There's a couple ways, but I think what will probably help us out for this problem um, is to isolate Y. Now, to isolate y, there's a couple things you need to note. Um, first, there's this invisible negative 1 that's in front of the y. Um, and second, there's a 3x that's in front of it. So uh, what I'm going to suggest that you do, and I like this method as well, is I always make the y positive first. And the way that we're going to make the y positive is we're going to add one y to each side. So that's going to do two things for us. It's going to cancel out the y's on the left side. That leaves us with 3x equals, and then we're not going to do 12 plus 1 on the right because the 12 lacks the variable y. So we're just going to keep the two side or the two terms separate. We're going to keep the 1y and the positive 12 side by side. Now, what was the point of this again? Oh, I think the point was to try to isolate y. Because if we isolate y, then chances are our equation is going to end up in one of our two common forms, mx plus b or hk form. Both of those have y isolated. So now let's think about the side that has y and think about the two things that are attached to y. There's a 1 that's multiplying and a 12 that's adding. However, if the one's multiplying, we really don't need to write that. And so now that brings it down to just one thing is attached to y, and that's a 12 that's adding. So let's undo adding 12 by subtracting 12. Okay. And if we go through and get this done, our 12s cancel. We still have a y on the right side. On the left side, I always like to put the x's first, and then we have the minus 12 right after. And now we have an equation y equals 3x minus 12. Or maybe I should switch it around and put the y on the left side and the 3x minus 12 on the right side. How does that help us? Well, we can do the same thing with this equation right here that we did with the graph over here, we can analyze it. So looking at this equation, we should now be able to see two things, three things. First, this equation is definitely in the form of m times x plus b, or, of course, slope, y-intercept, form. And because mathematicians are very much not creative people, we call it slope-intercept form because we can see the slope, which is up 3 over 1. There's my slope, or my m. And, of course, we can see the y-intercept. Our y-intercept is the number that's adding or subtracting to the term with x. And that's right there. All right, we have a slope. We have a y-intercept. Now, what is this problem even asking us to do? Well, they say, does line A have a larger value for the slope? Line A had a slope of 4 over 1. Line B had a slope of 3 over 1. So I think A does have a larger slope. That's seeming like a good option. Does line B have a larger slope? No, 3 is smaller than 4. Do line A and B have the same slope? No. Can we determine the slope? Yes. It definitely is A. Now, a word of warning before you turn off this video. Some of you might have looked at this original equation that's back up here, and you might have said, wait, why did we do all this work, right, all this work to get down here? I already know the slope is 3. Look at that. The slope is 3. It's right there. Be careful. The slope is not easy to identify unless y is by itself. And a quick example of that might be an equation that's really, really similar to this. What if I just said 3x plus y equals 12? Still think the slope is 3? 
well, hopefully you're suspicious since I set this problem up, but if I wanted to isolate y, take a look at what happens. We have a y on the left side, a negative 3x plus 12 on the right side, and the slope is not positive 3. The slope is negative 3 over 1. So the word of warning or the words of caution are that if y isn't completely alone on one side of the equal sign, you generally will not know the slope. We did get lucky here in that 3 ended up being the slope, but that will almost never be the case, and they will probably try to trick you with that on the test, so be careful. Thanks for watching, and keep studying.